Hello Malaysia, this is Jericho here and this is a Wait a Minute production. Today is the 5th of July 2013. 13. And uh, the haze is back from Indonesia. What the fuck are you doing in Indonesia? So as you can see, there are lots of stuff here and um, dinner is going to be some fish from the Chinese restaurant with an Indian shop below. Oh, it's a Chinese name. Some fish, I'm going to put this in the oven to fry, uh, to bake at 200 degrees Celsius for maybe God knows how long. And some Karanza chicken also from the same shop, froze out of the frozen into the fire. Some chicken lovelies. By itself is nice, but with the Karanza curry, it will be excellent. Like the here. Can you see it from the, through the plastic cling film? You can see the marks that I've been making every day, little by little. You just need a bit of it just to flavor your rice and chicken. I'm leaving those to tour and today I'm going to do a fry of the oyster, oyster mushrooms. And he has been in the fridge for some time now. I've been putting it in water and yellow colors coming out, so uh, I don't know whether I can eat this or not. It smells kind of fishy, but since it's been fried, so it doesn't matter. Frying will kill off anything poisonous, bacteria and such, and maybe not rot rotting stuff, but fry-ups are good. McDonald's, they fry a lot of things. Chips, uh, anything. Ch uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken fries a lot of things, like chicken. And all of them uses rotten stuff, so it should be okay if I fry this, even though it's rotten. So, I'm going to rinse it and put in fresh water. Hopefully, to take out the disgusting things. And you can see three onions here, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, onion rings as well. I'm going to use the same corn flour and the amount of uh, salt and pepper that I use for frying the oyster mushrooms. As an additional thing to the fry up today is bananas. Bananas are good because they're full of potassium, yellow stuff and the most important thing is athletes love to eat this, especially women's tennis players. Don't you feel that you have a biggie when you see them eating bananas while they are playing or resting or between matches yes it does it for me bananas are good but to me personally if it's too ripe it makes me gag it makes me want to puke I don't know why it's, maybe it's the consistency maybe it's the taste maybe I've been like having phobia of fucking I mean having phobia of sucking dicks uh, what the fuck I mean not that I've sucked a dick before but uh, I'm just uh, metaphorically saying it so forget what I said about sucking dicks and whatnot. so on with the review danger danger coming out of a closet is not good I am straight as straight as my dick so this is bananas a bit too ripe already so I decided to fry them uh, frying there are like two ways maybe one way is to put it in batter which I always did in Britain Bat uh, banana in batter and voila delicious by itself but even more delicious when you sprinkle some honey onto it the batter and banana and honey ooh delicious that's back in Britain and we have a local here, here Chumbadak. Chumbadak is a local fruit only found in Southeast Asia, I think. Maybe in Brazil, Amazon, who knows? Fuck knows, God knows. So Chumbadak actually smells kind of delicious to me. And it smells like durians, which is like the anti-holy grail to the Westerners. So it smells is very pungent but not as repulsive as durians but it's not repulsive to me, it's delicious, it's like a pussy it smells like a pussy, okay pussy smells like fish but this one smells like heaven I'm just trying to say that the pussy smells like heaven 
So I'm going to taste test one. Uh, I think it comes with a seed. Mmm. Mmm. It is. The consistency is very rubbery. Not that I'm saying it's rubbery. It's like sap, like it's like it's like biting onto a. It, it just feels delicious. It's not a durian. Durian is soft and creamy and and full of goodness and heatiness and deliciousness and fuckiness. This one is not that creamy. It's more sappy. If you get what I mean. You see, the rubber tree, the sap that comes out, it comes out, and you leave it over time. It becomes like rubber, and this is the semi state of rubber. It's and the taste is very very delicious so you all westerners and gaijins and whatnot come to Malaysia eat this crap I mean this food this delicious mm. and frying it frying this thing we cook the seed making it wholly edible but now I don't think it's edible actually it's very soft so mm, could be edible but I'm not gonna try it So I'm going to explain the process of frying this Jericho style. I'm going to freeze this. I'll frozen this. I'll put it half of it in the batter and half of it in the dry rub. Means I don't know what it means actually. I don't. I don't want to use eggs on this. No, no, no. I think um. Uh, I don't know how to actually do it. Yeah, I think I use water based batter same goes for this one water based batter half of it but the other half I think uh, also water based batter I think I would do either I, the, for the banana I will do it water based batter and freestyle the other part freestyle meaning that I'm not going to use anything I'm just going to fry as is and see how it comes out but I'm not, not going to use the whole thing I'm going to use the ones that are black only but seems to be like blackened most of it or very very ripe so it is good for frying yeah most likely it is or fucked up I mean too ripe so what I'm gonna do is uh, this one I think I can leave it for the time being because too many bananas make one's dick limp put it in the fridge The process for this bananas is to peel it and put it in the freezer. Same goes for the chimpeda. Chimpeda, how do you spell it? C E M P E D A K. That's C for cunt, E for idiot, M for motherfucker, P for penis, E for idiot again, D for dick, A for asshole, K for cunt. The German can't word. I hope they spell it as a K. So peel it all and be merry. So today, the 5th of July, what the fuck? Uh, it's like so ripe that the skin is even riper than the what's inside or rotten. Uh, who cares? Everything you fry is best when it's rotten. To mask the stench of decay so I was like uh, in uh, Chow Kit and I found a very easy way of going there already I found a way the right way to go to Jalan Raja Laut and thank God for that and I did some impulse buying and I got myself a, unfortunately a full burst version of the Master Grade impulse was it impulse or destiny destiny I think yeah destiny it is ugly as fuck but heck I had to buy something is uh, called a commercial thingy, commercialization of the mind, the want materialism and stuff. And uh, I got also the raid version of the Zaku 2, piloted by the excellent Shah Aznabu. And uh, I was doing my unboxing of the Zaku 2 uh, 
uh, what's that word? Uh, al fresco means outside and near a building. I think it's a finance building. And one of the guys say, say "Oh, that's a Zaku too." I'm surprised that these motherfuckers in the finance they know about all this shit. So I guess uh, there there is a bit of humanity in all these finance assholes. Well, then again, they might be from hell. Who knows? Because uh, when I ask them, ask the fella, they say, oh, why, why don't you do some fucking mosquito? Got one, thank God. See, mosquito, assholes. And I ask them, oh, do you, uh, since you know about it, do you like to like do one and say, oh, no, no, no time, making money. Fuck. What the, I mean, it's a normal type of answer, but heck, I'm not making money. I'm still like living. So as I was saying, uh, well, so we talk about the Destiny Gundams and whatnot, and about games as well. I told him about Company of Heroes. He does not know. He only plays Diablo. So strange that they do not know about Company of Heroes. That means that means they are not a hardcore gamer. If it's a bit dark here, you might as well throw it away. Well, I'll just throw a bit out. So I'm peeling the skin. Because out of past experiences, like many, many, many years ago, that once I've frozen the damn thing with the skin on, it would be so fucking hard to actually peel it off. So I best do this now and cut it as well and put it in the freezer. Why am I putting it in the freezer? I don't know. Why would I want to put it in the freezer? Uh, I'm not sure actually. But uh, this is Jericho style, so we just do things without thinking rationally so everything's irrational, impromptu and on site. You can smell the alcohol already. You know some of them. So I'll freeze them for maybe a half an hour or one hour. It's up to you mates. So uh, I'm going to chop this thing now, so watch me chop stuff. Hopefully you get an erection by watching people cooking, because I'm always around to please you. But I only have one master, and my master is my Zam Zyrio Hello Malaysia, this is Jericho here and this is a wait a minute production. It's the 8th of July 2013 and as you can see I've chopped it out here which I've put in the fridge for like say uh, how long? A couple of days, two or three days. Because I didn't have the time to actually fry it. You you can eat it as this, it's it's okay, no not bad. But uh, the smell <coughs> the smell is like something like durian but sweeter so we have to use cling film and we wrap the damn thing all the way around so that the molecules the smell the whatever cannot escape the 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 plate and uh, make the whole fridge smell of jimbadak so let's get rid of this so I'm always curious to how they actually do it, the batter in the roadside stalls in Malaysia. We have chimbada, we have fried, uh, fried, all the types of fried stuff associated with Western food. Fried bananas, fried uh, ubi kenedek or yam, or I don't know how to call it, uh, what to call it in English, but it is so. I think of the fan extractor because I'm just shouting above my my voice and I better take off my my shirt because it is steaming in here even though it's Malaysia if I was in like say Britain yes steaming is the word to use when you're describing a very warm area or situation so I have flour here normal flour uh, it's not corn flour it's just wheat flour the normal shit stuff and this one well, this is not part of the cooking. This is actually the lohonko. Is it lohonko? Yeah, lohonko that I made today. I boil it for one hour, and uh, this is for my cough. So hopefully it works. It's sweeter now, but even though if you don't put in uh, uh, rock sugar, the unrefined one, the brown one, which is much better, 
it is still sweet so here goes to my recovery so that I won't cough that often because I've been doing videos and I think uh, the f a feature that is quite uh, prevalent in all my videos is me coughing so that's not a good sign I'm a bit, uh, to bit towards going to get TB or t tuber tuberculosis tube, whatever. So, Jambadak tastes lovely by itself, but I'm going to fry it Malaysian style. So, from what I gather from my own experience and my experience with cooking, I didn't consult anything at all. I'm just going to make the batter, which is wet, myself. Hopefully, it works. So, this is the batter. Sorry, I mean, this is the flour and we pour a bit of, okay, quite a lot. I think, uh, how much do I need? I'm not sure, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not so sure, I don't know and I don't. Okay, this is salt. So you know why it is 4 liters and this is sugar. By itself, the chumbara is sweet. But I would like to add a bit of zinc, put a bit of sugar. I don't know whether it will work or not. Maybe just uh, 3 teaspoons of sugar in the batter. Uh, sorry, in the wheat flour <coughs> and put this away and water, I need water water is uh, I need a cup uh, uh, uh. a cup of, uh, what do you call it filtered water because the water in this place in Slango is dirty not so nice just put water and just stir <coughs> back in Britain when my my boss and his uh, and his uh, <coughs> helper slash girlfriend uh, when when they finish work okay life in Britain is just really dull for them and also for me so what they do this China China men or Chinese people from China is <coughs> usually they drive to other takeaways and talk and play and gamble and stuff and usually they love to go to like Cardiff casinos just to blow away their hard-earned money I can never ever understand why they do that they really really lose the, all their money the, the, the money that they saved for the purpose of just well just giving it to the casino I so donate it to a charity fund <coughs> but no so this is the stuff that I made hmm, actually it smells like goat meal <coughs> so uh, normally the shop that I worked in closes at around midnight or 11 p.m. ish you have to have an extra license if you want to like uh, open past midnight I mean all these Chinese uh, fellas or the bosses in the takeaways they prefer to open past midnight during Fridays and Saturdays because that's when the ghost of of uh, ghost of what the <coughs> ghost of the white man would uh, go around wobbling in the streets drunk as a skunk and whatnot yep white men love to be drunk on a Friday or a Saturday and sometimes they can be violent or they can be happy because uh, one time I saw this girl this Welsh girl she is I think she was 15 or 16 she is really beautiful and really really fuckable I mean fuckable as in you would like to like make her the mother of your children definitely and she was like fucking drunk and she ordered uh, the special meal which is four chicken balls, one fried rice, one uh, portion of chips and a sauce all in one big fucking big huge polystyrene thing and I think that one was around five pounds is it? I think it's five pounds or so I can't remember it was so long ago so and and she was okay she was really pretty I loved Oh, okay. I have said that already. Okay, so I'm not gonna repeat myself. She had the food 
and she was eating it with a plastic fork and and she just fell asleep sitting down eating oh my god what the fuck she was so drunk my god that's the time when you can actually go and rape her but never mind i didn't say anything forget what i said just now okay okay there were a lot of people at midnight so no chance of that of course i wouldn't do it i, I wouldn't do such things trust me okay if you don't trust me so what the fuck who cares so this is the batter is nice and it looks very very milky and smooth actually should i put milk powder into it hmm. it would be interesting to put milk powder let me check whether i have milk powder powder but I do have some kind of uh, you know that uh, white powder tapioca thingy I don't know Nescafe made is it yep uh, no milk powder oh, damn it. Ah, fuck it. so as I was saying uh, my boss and his girlfriend girlfriend would go out uh, for a couple hours like three or four hours and they would come back to the shop around 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. because uh, usually they sleep until 3 p.m. while I wake up at around 1 p.m. so it's quite a very unorthodox and different lifestyle that we have uh, okay I'm gonna I think it's boiling already so I'm gonna put this one inside and just dump it in and let it fry this is how they make chicken balls in Britain they take the chicken which is I think it's cooked already I mean I think it's boiled so it's not raw chicken and why do they do that? because uh, white men don't like raw chicken if they see blood in the bone of a cooked uh, chicken meal they will like scream and holler what the fuck nah, that's what they do in Malaysia or in Asian countries we don't give a fuck because that, uh, we eat everything with the bone because that's where the taste is that's why chicken and whatnot is kind of like tasteless in Britain that's why they they require a lot of uh, seasoning from outside like rosemary and thyme and bay leaves because they just they, they just don't know how to actually cook in my humble opinion so when my boss and uh, his, his uh, girlfriend were to go out I would like have free reign of the, of the shop and when I'm hungry you know what I do normally I'll take a banana and I'll put dip it in this and fry it and when it's fried I would uh, what do you call I would uh, sprinkle some honey onto it which they have thank god and well and and eat it as a snack um, after midnight snack so put it in the oil and let it fry as fry can be I hope this turns out well this is my first time so be gentle please this is my first time be gentle and also that's not the only thing I fried bananas that is and I'm not talking about my cock the other uh, yeah that's, that reminds me if Last time I wanted my ex-girlfriend 1-3 uh, asked her whether she can suck my cock or not and she says if you cook it then she will Okay, that was the end of asking her to give me a blowjob Life sucks for me right? Yeah I know You don't need to tell me So That's the, uh, about the food in Britain <coughs> uh, Bananas are not the only thing I fried I also fried the uh, ever delicious pancake ducks in Britain I mean I don't know about here in Britain pancake ducks are really delicious duck which has been uh, uh, marinated marinated in hoisin sauce or whatnot fry it until it's crispy and <coughs> serve it with uh, raw spring onions raw cucumber and wraps which is made of flour, flour and and eat it with hoisin sauce, the, the dark brown purplish 
lovely tasting delicious amalgam of deliciousness food <coughs> <coughs> so I will eat that and it is expensive it's like 14 14 I think it's 14 pounds in Namaskan for a quarter of a duck so I will just go there and eat one quarter and I, I don't do it that often because I don't want them to know that I'm eating their best stuff so you gotta be very smart when you are in a, in a foreign country but nowadays uh, if you want to find work in Britain I think it's pretty hard because Britain is not doing well really really not doing well and the tax man is like hunting down all those Chinese takeaways uh, yeah, they're hunting down them, uh, them down because <coughs> the Chinese takeaways they don't pay tax. They don't. They don't need to. They, there's a loophole provided by the <coughs> by the accountant or the lawyers that uh, requires requires them not to uh, pay tax for the past well couple of years before the crisis, the 2007 is it crisis, the financial crisis, thanks to the mortgage uh, stupidity of the Americans. And, and the greediness of the banking, banking fuckers. So fry until it's golden brown and maybe since I have uh, extra batter, <coughs> extra batter here, <coughs> I think I'm going to do some, something special. I'm not going to put chilies into it, okay? Don't worry. here that I found in the cabinets of my friend Grace's uh, kitchen and I think I'm going to do something with it. Uh, I don't know uh, whether this is correct or not but here goes nothing. Put some oatmeal onto the plate. I want to cup, I want to coat some of the uh, chumpada or jackfruit. So uh, nowadays the uh, taxman is like hunting them down and uh, going to the shops and and uh, asking for the receipts. The one time that I was in like say Britain, uh, I think it was my third uh, workplace. The taxman came into the fucking shop and I was like, wow, I was so scared. And the taxman said, what's your N9 number and uh, national national identity number? And I said, I don't know, I forgot. And I was scared because I was afraid that they might come back and arrest my ass and put me in jail and send me back to Malaysia. So thank God they didn't do that because that time it was pretty pretty okay in the 2004-2005 era. Nowadays I think it's different. <coughs> they want to deport everybody back everywhere. So my experiences in Britain were pretty good. I mean, I worked most of the time. Sometimes I worked like seven days a week for six months. That was my longest stretch before I became a bit crazy. I mean, can you believe it? Stuck to the the shop for like say seven days a week for six months. I mean, it's just crazy. And I I was like. After my four year tour of duty, I was so happy to come back. And from there, I went to New Zealand and I had the blast, a blast in New Zealand. Although I didn't make any money in New Zealand, unfortunately. But life is not about money. Life is about sex, about friendship, about masturbation, and about food, and interest, and entertainment and visits to massage parlors I, pre 
prefer to make thing uh, coat my my food, fish or what not with uh, this type of batter. I think is this nicer, nicer than using egg wash and also the uh, corn flour, because the corn flour will just decimate the quality of the oil thoroughly. <coughs> so let it fry on. So do you want me to talk about Britain? Uh, okay, I'll talk about Britain. Britain is a very miserable place, okay? It is a miserable place because of the fucking weather. It's like always mendung, it's always cloudy. It's, it's just depressing. And if you see a sliver of sun, a sliver of God rays, a bit of sun, you feel happy. Very, very happy. That is how dark Britain is. And it's even worse during the winter. It's only like you have sunlight from nine, I think nine a.m. to three p.m. at the most uh, in the middle of winter, which is coincidentally twenty seventh of December, which is Christmas. Wait, twenty fourth of December, which is Christmas. Sorry, that's that that is a pagan type of celebration, Christmases. But uh, since modern life has christened it Jesus' birthday, so I don't have any say in it. So it's getting really really brown and nice, lovely jubbly. So I'm gonna scoop some out to coat them with wheat. Come on motherfucker, come out. It's so hard to actually come out. So I had a blast in uh, Britain. Uh, at my final four, fourth year, I went to two music festivals. Okay, it's different from the music festivals you get in Sarawak. Those are like bomb. That's not the same as the ones you get in in uh, Britain, which is the theme is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Here, no, 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 not much drugs at all. Not much alcohol too. So that takes the fun out. So I got to see Limp Biscuits. Got to see uh, who, who else did I see? So I saw uh, ah, who else did I see? I saw Metallica. I saw Linkin Park, and those are the only notable ones that I can remember. The rest I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because I was working there as a volunteer. That's why I didn't need to pay. Hundred pounds or more just to to camp in that place. <coughs> uh, I think the ones that I went to were <coughs> were uh, called the not Glastonbury. I didn't go to Glastonbury. Glastonbury was the pinnacle, awesome, the most awesome uh, music festival ever. But that's a bit expensive. I think it was two hundred pounds and going up, and it, the tickets would be sold off within hours. So people are buying online, and those to total ticking ticket ticket uh, totals, uh, they keep on buying stuff and sell it, sell it at a very ridiculous price during the festival itself. <coughs> so, okay, next. And we put coat it with that. And put it with uh, what you call it, wheat. I don't know whether it works or not, but here goes. Can you actually see this? I think the same thing can be 
used to make uh, what uh, make what a uh, uh, chicken, yeah, fried chicken. The bat batter, I'm not sure, but the wheat covering something with wheat, uh, that's I think is okay. That reminds me, I just have to watch that uh, Mas Master Chef US. Yep, I need to watch that. I haven't downloaded it yet. Uh, I haven't even have time to watch Invisible Walls of game trailers, and I just don't have time. I'm just going around looking for a camera. And uh, today I went to Laoyat, and there is some promise in buying uh, 400 ringgit, uh, 400 ringgit Canon camera, which is a dedicated video camera. It has its own record button, and not the what. Uh, what do you call it? Taking picture button as a button uh, for record button. This has a red dot button. Definitely, the the the, the salesman, a Malay chap by the name of uh, shit, I forgot already. Zabi is it? I don't know. Forgot. Says, uh, oh, this one is uh, suitable for me. So we tested the unit out, uh, <coughs> the video continuously for let's say 25 minutes, and. I think that's okay, and he he was perplexed. He was he was dumbfounded that it stopped at 25, even though it was using a 32 gigabyte uh, flash uh, SD card. Sorry, uh, because he had experience with this Canon model before, and he said that it went to like 30 minutes or so. So there must be something wrong somewhere. Maybe something to do with the card, which was a the SD card, which is a, was a class four. So tomorrow I'm returning to Laoyat and maybe. Uh, he will give me the results, maybe using a 32 gigabytes class 10 SD card. So we'll give it a try. <coughs> Sorry. That's about it. Put it in water. So uh, when I was walking around uh, Bajaya Times Square talking to the people, good people at IT, Toys and also the good chap at uh, Gamers Arena, the Gundam shops, and an epiphany came to me and I thought, okay, it stopped at 20 minutes because maybe the file size has reached 4 gigabytes. When it, anything, if you are, you are familiar with computers, any any file that's more than four gigabytes, a single file with a four gigabyte is not going to be read by the computer. So I think the cameras are are programmed to not let it exceed four gigs. So that's my theory. Okay, it's brown enough, I think. So it's brown enough. Put it on a bigger plate. So that's my theory. And I was talking to the Gamers Arena uh, chap there, nice chap, even though I didn't buy it. I wanted to buy a uh, hobby paint thinner or paint remover that's around 10 ringgit, but they don't have it in IT Toys or Gamers Arena. So it sucks. So I was talking to him, uh, the Gamers Arena chap, and, he, and I told him, your shop houses the most original Gundams in Malaysia. I told him frankly that. And I've been around in KL a lot, a lot of times looking for all these shops. So his one is the biggest, frankly speaking. It, Gamers Arena has the most Gundams ever. And I'm not counting Litak because Litak is a distribu distributor, so they have a warehouse full of Gundams. They don't count for shit. So his one is the biggest, and I congratulated him. And he was like, think, trying to give me, uh, tell me which one was bigger. But he says that Mid Valley ones, uh, the Mid Valley one about like uh, at the top floor near the somewhere somewhere the escalator or something. I told him I've been there. It used to sell bootleg and uh, bootleg Gundams. I bought my uh, perfect grade Eva 01 unit. I don't remember the price. Yeah, I bought it from there. But and I returned to Mid Valley a couple of times, and I went to that place, and they are not selling that anymore. They are just selling comics, 
some figures and mostly concentrating on Warhammer crap. I don't know what's so popular about Warhammer, but everybody has their own preferences. So it's a shame that a lot of those shops around that I used to go to back in the good old days of like eight years ago before I went to Britain are closed. Uh, yeah. So this is very hot, this Jimbada. It's very, very hot. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, got uh, power issues. Yep, power issues. So this is the chamber duck. And I recharge my power. And guess what? You can see this one. The salt. Yep, I'm sprinkling salt all over this sweet thing. My philosophy in life is yin and yang. When there's sweet, there is salt. Or there, when there's bright, there's left, there's positive, there's negative, there's penis, there's vagina, there's cum, there is love juice. And yep, I wonder what it tastes like. I think it's cool enough already because I was like downloading stuff on my, uh, on my laptop while I was waiting for the battery to recharge. Hmm. This Lohongo tastes good, warm, look look warm or cold. Good for the throat too. And I'm eating all this and chilies as well. I've been I think I'm digging my own grave. So let's do a taste test. Ooh, this is like it's like you can just mmm delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Motherfucking good man. The sweetness is inside and salty outside and the uh, crunchy batter. So see you in Malaysia. Hopefully you learn something here. This is Jericho part 3 of uh, Chimbada frying. Bye bye Malaysia. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Crunchy, salty, sweet. Just like my sperm. Mm. And today I didn't get to buy sasabi high grade from Union 8. I wanted to go there but I would spend too much time in La Vella Plaza. So tomorrow I'm going back to La Vella Plaza, see about the camera and hopefully everything will be alright. And